Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspiration and Hope is proudly brought to you by the good guys at the Six Minute Webinar. Today, we got two wonderful guests, great friends of mine. I've known Dr. Ted Groner for oh, a couple and a half, two and a half, three years, something like that. He is a dentist and he's going to talk about how he relieves fear. And he has developed a very special, unique technique when it comes to wisdom teeth. We're talking about less pain, you know, less anesthesia, faster recovery time, all those wonderful things. In other words, on his website, he goes from owl to wow. Also, we're going to have a young lady on with us today. She also is the host of Everyday People on Friday, Tambra Blankenship. You're going to get a chance to meet her. You've seen her on the TV screen here, but we'll be right back right after this brief message. Hi, and welcome to the Messages of Inspiration and Hope show that's proudly sponsored by the 6-Minute Webinar. Today, we have some exciting and very interesting guests, real people just like you and me. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Now, here's Jim. Thank you so much, and we're back. Let me welcome Dr. Ted Groner to the stage. Hey, Doc, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jim. Oh, my goodness. You're an oral surgery, uh, oral surgeon from Tampa, Florida. Is that correct? I am. I've been in oral surgery for about 30 years. Uh, mm -hmm. I got my training in the Air Force, uh, started in the Air Force, actually, as a general dentist, and then got mm -hmm. my training in oral and maxillofacial surgery, uh, which takes, um, nowadays, it's four years, sometimes six, if you want to get your MD. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't get my MD, didn't need it. Um, mm -hmm. But um, that's what it is. It, it, it's Basically, it's it's an extended period of time where you're working as a first year surgical resident in a hospital setting, mm -hmm. rotating through a variety of medical specialties, uh, anesthesia. That's where we get our anesthesia training under mm -hmm. anesthesiology, uh, 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 the eyes of the an an experienced anesthesiologist. And uh, it's a really interesting four years. Oh, yeah. The thing that really interested me about uh, Dr. Ted, uh, ladies and gentlemen, was that when we first met him, we were in Orlando, Florida. When I say me and Don McGrath. We were down there. And uh, the thing, when he started talking about being a dentist and all that, I guess all of us have those moments that we've been to the dentist that were not pleasant. And I was listening to him talk and I'm thinking, wow, if I really need some dental work, I think I'd want to go to this guy because he understands where he's coming from with that pain because he was 19 years of age. He suffered from wisdom teeth and the, the, traditional way of removing those uh, wisdom teeth. And so he's got skin in the game. So he had, <laughs> he knew how he felt and he, he didn't want his other patients to feel that way. And I really salute you on that, uh, Ted, because that's just amazing. Would you share your experience with the folks, please? Well, as a 19 year old college student, I had no idea what wisdom teeth were. I just knew that I had uh, the gum in the back of my mouth starting to swell and, and become painful. And uh, after going to an oral surgeon, finding out that the gum was affected, I spent you know, up to a week in pain waiting for the antibiotic to treat the infection. Then, uh, then he removed the tooth. And, and in my brilliance, I decided to do just the one, not all four, uh, and do it awake, uh, which was another mistake. In fact, I've probably made multiple mistakes in this, this experience. Um, mm -hmm. The choice of anesthetic was probably a big one because it turned out it, this single tooth was a very, very difficult tooth to remove. It had long, uh, narrow uh, roots, four of them, all four of them broke. And so the surgeon had to remove each one of them individually. Uh, took him 45 minutes, nearly an hour. Um, when he was getting close to finish, he took the, the towel off my eyes and asked if I was doing okay. And the fact that he asked that question meant I probably shouldn't be. So I started feeling bad. <laughs> so God knows why I went into oral surgery. But in looking back after 30 years, it made me realize why I've, I've tried to improve every aspect of the wisdom mm -hmm. tooth removal experience. And it really starts with timing. Uh, mm -hmm. My timing as a 19 year old turned out to be too late for me. Mm -hmm. um, for others, it may not be, it, but I've seen 15-year-olds where the roots are fully grown. So it, it ranges quite a bit. Mm. Uh, timing, it, it relates to a number of different factors, but um, it's very, very important. It doesn't get any easier as you get older. And in fact, yeah. the problems compound when you have medical issues that start to pile on to the difficulty of, the, of getting the tooth out anyway. 
So it's, it's a fairly complex thing and I'm trying to make this easy for parents. Yeah, absolutely. Because you were going to, I don't want you to go in more in detail here in just a moment, but as you were talking about your technique and educating people when the proper time was, it reminded me of an incident where I worked with a fleet manager many years ago, back in the nineties. And his attitude was, I mean, this guy managed hundreds of trucks in the fleet. And he says, I schedule maintenance rather than let breakdowns and maintenance schedule me. Hmm. And so that analogy applies to what you're saying there, because you, you know, you didn't know you had wisdom, a problem with your wisdom teeth right. and you had to respond after it was a problem. But nowadays you're taking a, a different message to the parents, aren't you? My, my suggestion is to do them before they have an opportunity to get infected. So by mm -hmm. doing that, you decrease the length of time that, that your child is uncomfortable nearly in half because you don't have that extra week of pain that you're trying to eliminate mm -hmm. infection before you r remove the wisdom teeth. Uh, the other is that it, it, by doing them before infection starts, it gives you the option to schedule it when it's best for you rather than when it's best for the wisdom tooth. Um, so that, that number one. And number two, uh, if you allow the roots to finish growing, uh, they're that much longer an object to remove. Um, I actually have a, a couple of, of uh, examples here. Let's see, we got, this is a fully, fully formed wisdom tooth uh, that was, I actually 3D printed this. This is what it looks like, you know, before the roots have a chance to grow. So mm. if you have a, a tooth that's smaller, doesn't have roots going in three different directions, obviously that's an easier time to remove it. Oh, uh, the other yeah. factor is that as we go from the mid to late teens, the bone hardens like slow setting concrete. So not only do you have the, ro the roots growing during that time, but you have the bone hardening so that once you hit 20, you're at full on concrete stage. And wow. you think of 20 year olds as being young, but when it comes to bone uh, age, no, not so. So th those are the advantages of the teen. It's, it really is a special opportunity uh, to deal with it before uh, infection starts, before pain. When mm -hmm. somebody says the wisdom teeth are bothering them, it is, essentially it means the gum has gotten infected and that's too late. You want to beat that. Oh, yeah, because that's uh, after you got a major problem and that just, you know, it's going to be a, a lot more pain and longer right. recovery time. You said something earlier before we went live, and I really like this technique because my dentist used the same thing on me without kind of like telling me because he, he you control the how long the person has anesthesia. Would you yeah. share that with us, please? Um, the most common narcotic that's given in the beginning of an IV anesthetic is a narcotic that lasts about an hour. So it's given at the beginning of the case they're guesstimating about how much is, is the right amount for the, that patient. But once it's in, it's like taking a pill. You can't take it back. Yeah. So it lasts an hour. If the surgery only lasts 30 minutes. Well, you've got 30 more minutes of that narcotics side effects to have to deal with before you're comfortable. I changed that in that I, I found a sh an extremely short acting narcotic about 17, 18 years ago that uh, is it's given as a continuous drip by a pump. What happens is when that pump is turned off, the narcotic is gone in six to eight minutes, gone. Mm -hmm. So your recovery is 10 to 20 minutes and then walking out the door. None of my patients have YouTube videos taken of them because they're not going home with active medication. Mm. And not that surgeons intentionally send the patients home with, with active medication, but all mm. you have to do is do a, uh, a search on YouTube for wisdom teeth, and you're going to find just loads of wisdom teeth where kids don't remember the way home. They're, they're, they're basically speaking gibberish, and that tells you that they still got active narcotic, or at least active drug, let's put it that way, on board. I'd mm. much rather see them going home with a little bit of relaxation at the end of their, yeah. their anesthetic, and that's it. I don't have to worry about them. Yeah. So, and it's a good idea for anyone that's going to be, you know, going to a, a dentist or any doctor like that to have someone drive you to there and from there, because uh, right. I've known, I've known people that, you know, I'm going to the dentist, got to have a, a wisdom tooth taken out. Okay. And they drive and come back and, you know, you know, that's, you know, well, what you said, that's extremely dangerous because there's no way you can be mentally alert. Your reflex is going to be slowed. You're going to be mentally impaired. The whole the whole thing, you know. No, if you're sedated, you cannot drive uh, mm -hmm. and legally no you can drive for 24 hours. Now, if you have a surgery done with local anesthesia, well, then you can drive yourself. But mm -hmm. there, there's another point 
and the reason why spending the money on a general anesthetic is important is because remember the story I just told you about in having my wisdom tooth removed. Well, this is what, 50 years later, and I still remember that same story. Well, <laughs> if I had been put to sleep for that surgery, I wouldn't be telling you any of the gory details because I wouldn't remember them. And that to me is, is the second benefit of going to sleep. Not only do you experience the difficulty of the surgery, but you truly don't have a memory to carry on that may interfere with your getting routine general dental care throughout your life. So it's, it makes a huge difference. It really does, because I was sharing with you before we went live about an incident when I was about nine or 10, something like that. And, he, and the dentist just looked at me because he was putting a needle in me. And he says, and I'm owing like a little kid would do. And he stopped me, looked at me and smiled and said, well, it's not hurting me. And I just kind of like looked at him. I mean, how do I, <laughs> what kind of an answer is that, you know? And But uh, that thing's uh, like that. That proves my point. You remember that that experience. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I imagine you probably have patients that come in to see you. And if someone's watching out there and they've got a fear of going to the dentist, because I've never seen anybody, you know, say, hey, guess what? Guess what I'm going to do today? I'm going to go to the dentist, you know. But I mean, you, you, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to be facetious or funny, sure. but I mean, you know, we all have that. Uh oh, <laughs> we're going to the dentist. You know, the heart rate's going to go up a little bit. But someone who has a fear, who's experienced trauma, from going to the dentist. I know you've, you've dealt with that. And what would you advise someone to do? just give them good advice out there in, in the audience, please? Well, let me separate the, the two. Going to a general dentist uh, when you're fearful, there are some general dentists who have this, the, the training and the skills to do sedation. Uh, some mm -hmm. do it by, by sleeping pill, others do it by IV. Uh, I prefer to see something done that's shorter acting that you have more control over. Um, what oral surgeons do is they don't do routine dentistry, but they do do surgery. And mm -hmm. more often, uh, people don't want to be awake for their surgery. So that's why we, we do so much more anesthesia than going to a general dentist. But that doesn't mean you can't get the same thing at a general dental office if they're trained to do so. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it can be important for, for even general dentistry. Oh, yeah, sure. Because I was really impressed when you talked about all the years that you had spent in researching and um, how you came up with your particular procedure. And how long have you been using this procedure now, would you say? It's been about 17 or 18 years. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a phenomenal technique in that I feel much more comfortable um, with the dosing because with my ultra short acting narcotic, and I didn't invent the narcotic, I just refined the, the, the use of it. Uh, I can decrease that narcotic to match what the patient needs. Because I found out with experience that not everybody has the same tolerance of medications and it really yeah. stands out when you can uh, give it as a continuous infusion and you can back off on that narcotic if you need it. That's gold, you know, when you have that much more control over your narcotic uh, yeah. and not having to reverse it where it's completely gone. I can actually decrease it as we go uh, along with a separate pump for the sleep drug. So I've got yeah. dual controls over both the medications that are used for the anesthetic. And uh, what's, there isn't, there's nothing more uh, comforting than a patient who wakes up that remembers what we were talking about as they were going to sleep. And mm -hmm. you're not going to get that uh, with any other technique. And it, it tells oh, me yeah. that I can, I can be comfortable in letting them go in, you know, after just a few minutes, I, I don't have to keep them for 30 or 45 minutes. And, and I'll tell you, there's a, a, a personal reason why I, I, I especially don't like using longer acting narcotics. It's because the side effect is nausea. And I, mm. I run from a room where somebody's nauseated. So I had to do something to get rid of that in my anesthetic. And, and I've done so. We haven't seen that in years. Yeah, so I, I understand because that's one of the things that I remember as a kid. I, when I had my tonsils taken out. The old ether thing where they put the stuff over your no Oh, yeah. my goodness that stuff is brutal i was only i had, I had ether when i had my appendix removed in second yeah. grade yeah. and uh, it's it's an experience it's a smell you'll never forget oh isn't that the truth isn't <laughs> that the truth but you know you're also you're an author aren't you brother uh, well i i wrote a book called the eight secrets about teeth everyone needs to know basic it, it's based upon things that are realized that patients don't understand about dentistry uh, mm. One of those chapters is actually about uh, wisdom teeth and discussing the roots, which is a, a huge part of, of making 
a wisdom tooth removal much easier is if you can time it right. So that's a chapter that's super important and has a ton of detail in it. But toward the end, there's also a chapter on your golden years. You know, if hmm. you are a senior and you haven't dealt with your, you haven't kept up with your dental care, you're in for a hard time if you run into problems and medical mm -hmm. issues start showing up. Um, that's not the time when you want to you want to gamble. You, know, you want to mm -hmm. be ready for getting old. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. really is true. If you want to enjoy your golden years, you got to be ready for it uh, so that it's not catching you. Oh, yeah. That's again like that preventive maintenance. You schedule it rather than having it, you know, the breakdowns and problems schedule you. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Ted, uh, one of the things I found interesting about you is that you're a, you, you do a lot of things outside of the dental office. I mean, I was amazed to find out that you, uh, you ran a marathon, six marathons, even the New York city marathon. Yeah. Yeah. That was my last yeah. one. Um, yeah. This a few years ago, obviously, but, uh, wow. you know, after having that appendectomy, I tried mm -hmm. to go out for track when I was in middle school, junior high in the Midwest, I mm -hmm. couldn't do it. Uh, it wasn't until I was in the air force, um, that I actually could do it. I was having some intestinal adhesion issues that didn't uh, allow me to, to run when I was in high school. But mm -hmm. when I saw some of my uh, my fellow dentist going out and running for a couple miles after work, I really got jealous. And I said, I'm going to make this work. And, <laughs> and so I started running. And then when I moved to Tampa, I had a neighbor across the street who was a long distance runner from Canada. And they, they suckered me into doing my first half marathon. Uh, I, uh, I was able to do it physically and it became a yeah. challenge and um, it's a blast like doing the Marine Corps Marathon in, in Washington, D.C. They start the, the race with a howitzer. You know, you being an army, you understand what that means. You know, that's a blast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was in the reserves, I was in the reserves for 28 years and wow. three years active duty. But uh, when it got ready to, to qualify every year for the two mile run and all that, I never ran one step before the test. <laughs> but but you know but you know what I did? Oh. I rode a I rode a bike, and I rode it a lot because that helped my knees and my legs. You build up that muscle, yeah. and then you go out there to run. It's a piece of cake because if you try to build your body up running, just you know, if you're in condition like I am, it, you're just you know, it's kind of like pushing a chain uphill. But get on that bike, it builds the the muscles, the the stamina, everything, yeah. and I, I that's really amazing. Yeah, and, that does help the knees quite a bit. Uh, and actually, oh, yeah. after doing six marathons, like a couple, three years later, uh, there was a half marathon that, were, that they did in, in St. Pete. And I thought, oh, I've, I've done six marathons. I can surely do a half with no training. Oh, I about died you know, <laughs> two miles before the end. You know, oh, yeah. You have to train for those runs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and another thing that struck me when you sent in your bio there, uh, you've also worked with the Tampa Bay Sympathy, um, a Symphony. I um, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, I, I went <laughs> from being a clarinetist in, in grade school to an oboist in, in junior high uh, and on through high school. I, I, I kept rising the ranks of, of, of instructors to the point where I was able to take lessons from the principal oboist of the St. Louis Symphony. It was an amazing experience. Uh, he was a crazy guy. He loved photography, uh, just like I did. He got pissed <laughs> off at the symphony, decided he wanted to go back to Europe to a real symphony. <laughs> so, so that was about time I went to college. I didn't play for 20 years. When I finally moved to Tampa, I, I picked it up again. I gradually worked myself up to a point where uh, a volunteer orchestra that plays in the three different performing halls in, in Tampa uh, mm -hmm. needed an oboist, and um, I, I happened to be available. Um, I, I was a bit of a, a, a a challenge for the the director because I was a terrible sight reader and it took every rehearsal for me to get to the point where I could get through the music. Now, mm -hmm. There was one particular piece of music that he threw at me. I think it was to see if he could get me to quit, but uh, it, it was a solo in the very beginning of the piece that used uh, keys that I'd never used in my life with my mm -hmm. instrument. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, I never got it right during rehearsal, but dang, if I didn't hit it, during each of the three performances, I was determined I was going to do it, and it, it worked out really well. So mm -hmm. it was it was tough. And the rest of the story, if you remember uh, Paul Harvey, oh yeah, that first 
performance that I had to do that solo. I was sick with with the, the flu the day before, and I was I was still only able to keep down seven up when I went to do that performance because you know what the rule is: the show must go on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I can appreciate how you felt there. My goodness gracious. And you're also, you've got uh, two grown kids and you got four rescue animals, huh? Yeah, I do. They, they somehow find me. Um, <laughs> uh, I have a schnauzer that um, my girlfriend's uh, niece, they found running late at night on a, on a busy road in a rainstorm. And, and this poor little guy was scared to death. Uh, we tried to track him down, but it, it wasn't chipped. And uh, they were going to give him to a schnauzer rescue. And I, I saw how well behaved he was. And, and uh, I'd never had a schnauzer. You know, we all thought that schnauzers were for old people. But it turned out he was a super smart and, and lovable guy. And he's been with me ever since. So um, then a couple other cats that we picked up. I'm allergic to cats, but these these cats needed homes. And uh, we got a we got a zoo. <laughs> yeah. I tell people that, you know, cats, uh, you live with cats and dogs yeah. live with you. Yeah. Yeah. because I'm a cat lover and I appreciate their, their, just their personality. They got that little personality, like, you know, I'm sorry, but I didn't get the memo who died and left you in charge. That's their attitude. You know, they're very different than dogs. I'd never lived with a cat, but uh, they can be very loving and uh, oh, yeah. you know, they're smart little dudes. Oh yeah. They really are. Hmm. And, you know, uh, looking at the, looking at what you've sent me and all, and it's very impressive, you know, your career and all my goodness gracious. Uh, I tip my hat to you because you really accomplished a lot because you didn't just go in there and just say, I'm just going to continue doing what I've been doing. I've been trained to do this. You thought outside the box and you look for ways because you put your uh, patience first in right. your heart. And, and that's a message for all entrepreneurs is don't look at what, you know, you got or whatever. So look what you can do for someone else to ease the pain in their life. Right. And, and for that, Ted, I got to salute you, my man. I, I really do, because that's really amazing. Thank you. And, but since you've done all these things, what's, is there anything that uh, you've done that no one else knows about you'd like to share with us today? There's one thing that, that people don't know about me that they wouldn't know, and it actually starts at birth. It, it's kind of crazy. My, uh, my birth certificate is worth probably more than most people's because it was signed by William Masters of Masters and Johnson fame. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, he happened to be my mother's OBGYN. And oh. uh, yeah, who, who knew? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you, out, uh, in the hands of a celeb. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you start out saying my birth certificate, you know, because of, I'm thinking, okay, you got born in a rich family because I knew that mine wouldn't be worth anything. <laughs> 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 but, you know, also too, when people go to your website, and let me put your website up there, I'd like for you to share with them what they would see or find interesting there. Okay. Um, okay. Will, will you put that up? Or you want me to describe it, or no? Just what would what would someone uh, see when they go to your website? What would they find um, unique? Well, what they're going to find is is they're going to find information in terms of why timing is important for removing wisdom teeth because it all the success of making a good experience for your team truly starts with getting the timing right and it's not the mm. same for everybody so that's one thing that uh, when you come to us we're going to get a, a, at least a panoramic x-ray to see what stage of growth uh, wisdom teeth are at and the, the important, important thing is to do it before your kids have problems so uh, bring them you know, say around 15 or 16, depending on when their, their their adult teeth came in, that'll help you to judge when. We'll get that x-ray. We'll see if that's the best time uh, to remove them. If it is, then we can do that. And um, there, there are other things we can do as well to make this uh, a great experience. You'll see also more information on that my quick recover IV anesthesia. Uh, and you'll even see a YouTube video, a, a typical YouTube video of a patient is in, in a car going home that has no idea what they're saying. So I want you to see what the dark side looks like. Mm -hmm. And then when you experience your child being clear when they wake up after the surgery, you know, even mm -hmm. if it's an hour, an hour and a quarter, they're talking to you and uh, and they're they're not off in La La Land. So yeah. both of those are, are probably unique to us uh, in terms of the difference with other other offices. And the other is pain control. And they're, mm -hmm. I'm constantly trying to find different ways in order to be able to reduce the discomfort after the surgery. 
And probably the newest thing that we've started using is taking advantage of platelets that we can, we can draw from the blood when we start the IV, spin it out, uh, create a product that has extra platelets in it. Why is that important? Well, platelets are the trigger, not only for clotting, but also for triggering the healing process. So I figured if we game the system, it can't hurt. So indeed it, it helps uh, to speed the healing of the gum tissue, but the bigger benefit is it decreases the pain that mm. patients have afterwards. And if we get every one of those steps right in this protocol, I've got kids coming in, I ask them, well, you know, how many of the narcotic uh, prescription that I gave you, did you take? And uh, the last one I do, 17 year old, zero. And uh, that's, that's my goal is uh, we know the abuse potential with narcotics and I would rather they tear up their prescription than take them because there are better ways to, to get the, the relief of discomfort after the surgery. And then the final benefit of doing this at the right time is it's done. They never ever have to worry about unexpected problems from their wisdom teeth from there, that point on. Um, there's nothing worse than, than leaving them alone and having your, your child have problems in college when they're trying to finish their degree and when they're in professional training, when they're starting their career, when their, their time is so much more valuable and mm -hmm. costly to take time off. So if they're having problems from the wisdom teeth, well, there's a week that's, that's gone because they're on antibiotics getting rid of the pain. Then they're getting the teeth out another week. That's a lot of time. Do it in high school. It's, it's less than a week taken out of their schedule. They're done. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. Wow. That's amazing. It really, it really is. Cause I'd never thought that much about wisdom teeth till I met you uh, a few couple of years ago, whatever. And uh, there in Orlando. And then as I, you know, re read your information you sent and all of that, I'm going like, wow, being proactive is the only way to go. And I, you know, I just yeah. never, you know, it used to be the old world that I came from. You know, your parents would take you to the dentist when you had a problem. <laughs> right, right. And, and that's, that's, all, that's, uh, that's the backward way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, if, if you want to make it an easier uh, procedure on yourself, I think so. I, I think it's mm -hmm. far better to deal with them before the problems start. Um, do we have time for me to give a couple examples in, in older age? For you, sir? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. I, I'm going to mention two numbers. A hundred. The oldest patient I've ever removed a wisdom tooth, she was in full dentures, didn't realize she still had an impacted wisdom tooth. And what happened is this wisdom tooth formed a cyst that was growing on her denture so that when she came to me, she said, Dr. Grellner, I can't get my denture in. Well, of course she couldn't because she had this big fluid filled cyst from a tooth she didn't know she had. Mm. That, so you, you, you would hate to actually reach 100 years old and then have problems with your wisdom tooth. Unusual, yes, but still. It can happen at any time. Another example is a 75 year old was, that was in far worse medical condition than the 100 year old. This guy was in a nursing home. He fell down, he hit his jaw out on the floor. He ended up breaking his jaw in the area that was weakened by an impacted wisdom tooth he had never had out. People don't consider wisdom teeth to be a risk uh, to everyday life, but um, certainly there's, there, there are people whose jaws are smaller that that wisdom tooth is taking up the strength of normal bone. So if that tooth is out early, you have a chance to fill in that weakened area with, with bone strengthening the jaw. So you don't have to worry about going out and roller skating and falling down, hitting your jaw. So, um, just a couple of examples of what, um, older patients I've had were totally surprised by issues with their wisdom teeth. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, you know, I never really knew that much about wisdom teeth other than I knew they had to come out. But as far as people in this listening in, you know, and being able to uh, understand the importance of being proactive, especially with your, with their children or grandchildren, right. my goodness. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and the easier. topic is, is, it's got so many different facets to it. It, it isn't a simple topic by any means. Wisdom oh, yeah. teeth are different than any other teeth. It's not something to just dismiss. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have questions, certainly go to your oral surgeon um, and, and try to find out more information as much as you can. Okay. Well, Ted, I want to personally thank you for coming on. It's good to see you again and uh, great having you as a guest. And I'm so glad that you're able to share information that people can, you know, say, hey, I want to be proactive about this and avoid a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort and all the things that can come later on. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Right. You bet. Uh, we'll we'll see you later. <laughs> bye bye. And ladies and gentlemen, I tell you right now, Ted is really a, a knowledgeable guy there. And he's, I know he shared a lot of things with us that just, my goodness, get you to thinking, right? We'll be right back right after this brief message. Hi, I'm Angel Marie Monticelli with Angel Marie Shines. And I had the pleasure, the honor to go through training for the six minute webinar. Oh my gosh. This webinar and how it's structured and how they teach it. Thank you, Speakers Pathway Coalition. Thank you, Don McGrath and the whole team for the six minute webinar because you made it so simple, easy. And the way you lined it out with the outline, I can reproduce it and reproduce it. And I'm already getting the engagement. I'm getting people that are coming back. They're saying, oh, I love this webinar that's so short so to the point and i love your products and what i'm selling but then what i'm also the services that i provide and i do not any of this because i have the framework so thank you so much to the whole team because the six minute webinar totally rocks thank you Well, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Angel Marie Monticelli, for that wonderful testimony that you gave. She's a wonderful lady. She's been on this show before, and we're going to have her on again real soon because she is really a shine on lady. But right now, I got to bring another young lady on board, and you may have seen her on Everyday People. Hello, Tamara. How you doing? Hi. What a great interview. Thank you for sharing with Doctor. That was amazing. Oh, Ted. my goodness. Yes. I mean, Ted is just, you know, I was so impressed with him. And yeah. he, he says, can I be on your show? And he, yes, because of the topic that he is sharing, you know, he, he covers some things that most people don't even think about. No, and, I never thought about taking my wisdom, my daughters. I've got that's the only one left. The other one's already had that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. definitely going to take advantage of that information and use it for my daughter. So oh, exciting. yeah, absolutely. Because it's very important because, they, you know, goodness. When you have a pain like that, it's uh, it, it doesn't go away with an aspirin, that's for sure. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So. And a lot of people know you. They're familiar with you because you're one of the stars of the everyday people, as I like to say. <laughs> yeah, I get to sp spend time with you every week. It's lovely. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I wanted to uh, start out a little bit about we, we started on our journey, on this journey here that took us here. We actually wanted to do something on TV was it about July last year, June, July, somewhere there? We started talking. I don't remember how it came up. We started talking, but what we did not know was that we had a higher calling coming. Yeah. And, you know, because everything we tried to get going, it didn't, you know, because we didn't know the pandemic was coming. <laughs> And we created the, the original webinar series on just using Zoom and Facebook Live because that's all we had. Yep. And then this thing just took off. And here we are. We're on the show every Friday with everyday people. And my goodness gracious, it's just been a real treat for us, hasn't it, Tamara? It has. It's been great interviewing some amazing people, sharing mm -hmm. their life journey and their stories. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, share with the folks out there a little bit about yourself, because you're used to interviewing people. But, you know, if someone <laughs> says, uh, who is Tamara Blanketship, what would you say? <laughs> well, I work with conflict resolution. I consider myself a relationship communication specialist. So I work uh, in corporate America. I work in relationships. We, so we got just a little bit of an audio problem there. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden it got to dragging a little bit. I don't know if there's a signal or what. Can you hear us OK, Tamara? I can hear us just fine. Okay. All right. Let's, let's try it again. So I navigate conflict resolution. I focus on relationship communication right. and helping people navigate things differently. Can't hear me consistently. Is that what's going on? What happens is it starts breaking up and it sounds like you're, you know, you're talking through, you know, in a barrel or something, but we're getting about every, every other word or something. That's, I don't know what the signal is. Are you on ethernet or are you on a Wi-Fi? I am on ethernet. On Ethernet. Okay. Well, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, they say third time's a charm. Let's give it one more time. 
too funny. So when I help people with this conflict resolution, <laughs> it's kind of a great example right now. <laughs> yeah. So staying positive and looking for those opportunities when challenges pop up and how to navigate it differently. So giving yourself some new, you know, little treasures. Are you still hearing me every other word? No, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> cool. You're giving me that look like, hmm, something's wrong. <laughs> but Ted just, he says, I hear it just fine. So oh, great. Well, maybe awesome. it was me. Might have been my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Are you selective listening? <laughs> <laughs> too cute so yeah i get these awesome opportunities where i help people who are navigating some serious challenges in relationships or even in business and sometimes personal so mm -hmm. it could be a negative talk going on in your mind about you know i can't find love or you know i'm my some of my favorites are i'm i'm unlovable i'm and you know i can't connect to others because i don't feel like i want to be vulnerable or emotionally connectable so mm -hmm giving them an opportunity to work through those moments and really redefine that space is what I love to do and helping people really find their voice in those relationships again. Oh yeah. And you stay very, very busy because uh, in addition to all the things that you do, you recently answered the call to uh, help some other folks out and you're doing that too. And uh, it's, it's just really, I tip my hat to you. I mean, what do you do in the morning? You get up, you, you eat a big bowl of Wheaties or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually don't eat until 11 o'clock. I fast for like 12 hours, so it, or at least a little wow. bit more than that, but anyway, yeah. So um, no, I actually do a great practice of meditation in the morning. I get into physical, I, you know, some kind of physical movement. I usually hike mm -hmm. or go straight to the gym and do a great workout or something. Get the get the mo the mojo moving, if you will. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> keep yeah. myself active. <laughs> Yeah, my morning, I got up this morning about four. Of course, I always drink water, you know, while my coffee is getting brewed. Because I think what, drinking a glass of water, I read that, that drinking a glass of water uh, is what the Japanese do. And it helps them lose weight, but it also, you know, helps them mentally, helps them in all areas of their life. Because we don't realize, or we, may, we maybe don't realize, but maybe don't think about it. But at night when we go to sleep and we're actually fasting. Yes, yes. And then in the morning we get up and we eat. We're we have breakfast. And we break the fast. That's why they call it breakfast. And yeah. uh, but while that uh, coffee is brewing, I'm drinking my water and I'm thinking, OK, one down and 29 to go. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I love my coffee in the morning. I really do. You're so funny but, about your coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, the things that you do and how you help people and all that, it's extremely, um, you know, I'm excited to tip my hat to you because you're so energetic. Mm. And you're always so uh, bubbly and happy. You're just a wonderful person to be around. Thank you. And uh, goodness gracious, uh, I imagine you're a bright light for a lot of people in their life, especially people that's walking in darkness and worry and fear, huh? Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people are struggling with um, some of my clients go through suicidal thoughts or navigating severe mm. anxiety or depression. So we give them a new opportunity to see that, that inner resistance and see something different. How can you, you know, how can you see anxiety as a gift? How can you see depression as a gift? What can you do with it? So mm -hmm. I love giving them a chance to play with <clears throat> some of those experiences and uh, just, you know, really look at what is, what is anxiety really about? You know, is it fear of the mm -hmm. future? Is it fearful of the future? What am, what am I making up? What am I hearing? And so getting them an opportunity to kind of shift that perspective it's not always, I loved our, one of our clients that we had, or one of the people we had interviewed a couple of weeks ago talked about how it's more in the body depression mm -hmm. versus in that suicidal patterning. Um, I loved what he had to say about that and how it, it does. It starts off somewhere. It could be a belief system. It could be a vitamin deficiency. It could be mm -hmm. something that starts it. So it can be a treasure hunt to figure out, you know, is it a belief? Is it nutrition? Is it vitamins? What, you know, is it your hormones? What's going on? Mm -hmm. So getting a chance to kind of be that detective, take that time instead of hiding from anxiety and, you know, running from it and doing something, you know, you know, even I, not that I'm against pill taking, but is right. there a real reason that those situations are happening? Is there an opportunity to naturally unwind it and do something different with that? So it's, it's really a powerful thing when you can take control over some of those things. Oh, yeah, because we had Joel Peterson on and that's who you're yes. talking about on everyday people. If you go if you go on Facebook to everyday people and um, let me just put the uh, 
I think I got the logo here loaded if I can show it to them. And if I push the right button, I can. Uh, <laughs> But you see the EP there, everyday people there. Uh, you can see the replay of that. And Joel was talking about how suicide is physical and how he got down to like 135 pounds. He was normally 240 or 225 in the Marines Corps. He was, you know, super, you know, super mm -hmm. trooper and all those things. Yeah. And his mother had to feed him to keep him alive. And then he said they had his family had to donate blood to yeah. keep them alive. And yeah. that's obviously not mental. That's definitely physical. And, yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. And then he went through that therapy and everything and uh, goodness, it just really changed his life. And uh, he's, he's very, you know, you just got to watch that if you're, if you're interested in that, because it's the things he said there makes you think, doesn't it, Tamara? It does. Um, and you know, I, usually when I take on a client, the first thing I do is I find out about their diet. I find out mm -hmm. if they've seen, they've had a recent, you know, test on their hormones just to see if everything is really, you know, working upper, you know, operating its all cylinders, as they say, or working mm -hmm. in a steam shape, or is it, you know, you know, just kind of do some of the cleaning up of the basics, but it is, it's really important to understand what's really going on because it may not be a stuck belief system. And I think a lot of the times we, mm -hmm. we blame ourselves for some of the things that are going on and it, it can be more than that. So navigating that, I do more of a traditional talk therapy. I do give you tools and strategy and how to know, navigate it differently. But it is important to have a collaborative relationship with your body and not be just denying the isness of what is real. You know, it could be a diet mm -hmm. issue, it could be in, you know, hormones. So navigating those things are, are my first, you know, order of business, making sure we've got all those things checked out. Oh yeah. That's navigating that is important. Yeah. Because nutrition, that's the foundation of your mental and your physical health. And uh, it's like I said, when we, when Joe had Joe alone, I was talking about, you know, I, when I was in my fifties, eight, like I did in my thirties and uh, taking all these good supplements to, in reality, what I was doing, I was turning my body from a processing center into a recycling center. Yeah. And that, that don't work. <laughs> that simply doesn't work. It's, that's kind of like eating chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. kind of like the eating chocolate cake and drinking the diet soda, thinking you're going to lose weight or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's probably a terrible analogy, I know, but that's what I, you know what came to my mind. So <laughs> I love it. No, it's yeah. good. I do. I think it's interesting. We don't, and sometimes we don't realize we're eating those sugary foods or those mm -hmm. behaviors because of a belief system. You know, it could be, oh, yeah. just, you know, I'm feeling depressed because nobody's in my life that I feel understands me and loves me for who I am. So mm -hmm. I'll eat that chocolate cake or that pound of ice cream or you know that quart pint of ice cream or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and really indulge, and we get in this belief that, you know, it's that, it's that bypass, you're starting to do something different, you know, trying to expect something to show up, you know, in your life to make you feel deeply connected and joyful. So mm -hmm. it's just, you know, recognizing what, what belief is stuck. Sometimes just, yeah. a, you know, pattern of that. Yeah, you're exactly right. I've known people that um, get into those kind of things and it's kind of like they're treating themselves because that's all they can do. And uh, that doesn't help anything. That just complicates the problem. It. Yeah. They don't want to deal with a lot of the times. So you don't want to you no. know, feel your sadness. Don't want to feel your anger. So mm -hmm. you know, put on that pretend happy face or you suck it up. You know, as they say, and then, you know, for men, man up, don't, you know, toughen up. Don't do that. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I grew up in a time when, you know, it was always, you know, real men don't cry and suck it up and that sort of thing, you know, and. And that's a bunch of hogwash. It really is because uh, we all have emotions. We all have feelings and we all hurt, you know, and yeah. we need to, not only do we need good, good food and good nutrition, but we also need very good relationships with people to be able to, you know, have friends and things of that and people important in our life. And, uh, you know, you, you know, I'm an animal lover, of course, and I've known some people, as sad as it is, that their, their animals is the only thing that they have in their life that uh, they can, you know, have any type of share any kind of love with. And, uh, you know, maybe they just don't have any children or the children don't, you know, come around or maybe not be close or whatever. But um, I know you're an animal lover. And, uh, yes, I am. Yeah. What kind of animals do you have? 
I have a Papillon. Papillon, okay. One right now. It's interesting. I've always had three. So it's mm. kind of a kind of an interesting experience to only have one. <laughs> she's oh, actually 16 years old. So mm -hmm. she's yeah, she's getting up there. She can't hear no more. <laughs> oh yeah. We uh, had a you know, we had a, a, a my son's dog, Rudy, he had congestive heart failure. We eventually had to put him down after a year because he was his health was just going down. But our little kitty uh, Dixie, I mean, my goodness gracious, uh, she's still, uh, we put him down on November the 21st, but she still hasn't gotten over that. I mean, she's just, uh, we, we see a difference in her and, uh, hey, look, and, you know, it's just amazing because that's a classic example. Not only do we, you know, need connections, but our animals, they need connections too, very much. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, we're all here to have that human experience or that emotional experience and animals are no different in that way. Right. So oh, yeah. those emotional bonds. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's so yeah. sad, so sad to, to, you know, let go of a loved one or let go of an animal that mm -hmm. brought such joy and done nothing but unconditionally love us. So. I'm oh sorry. yeah. That's hard. No, they're part of your family, you know, it just, yeah. it's, and they always, and they always will be, they always will be. That's the important thing. And, you know, Tamara, uh, working with you on the Everyday People Show, my goodness gracious, we don't have any problem uh, finding people that want to be on that show, do we? No. It's a great space. The whole purpose behind it is just oh. to share those lovely stories about, you know, why they get up in the morning and what drives them, their passions. Mm -hmm. So it's such a now, it's, it's an opportunity for people to be able to, you know, be recognized. Because really the hometown heroes is what they are. They don't like to be called yes. heroes. And I understand that. But uh, they, they're able to share how they give back to their community. And they're able to share things with how they help others. And it's a wonderful opportunity. And we're going, this Friday, we're going to have Michelle Morales on. And you know what a wonderful lady she was. Yeah. As I told her, I said, we had, we, we've had a person you know, at the council on us due, due to a family situation. And I says, Michelle, would you like to be on our show? Help us. And she says, sure, no problem. She says, under one condition. I said, what's that? She says, I want you to be on my show in the Philippines. I said, oh. I can do that. <laughs> and if not, I'll, I'll let Tamara do that. <laughs> there you go. I'd love that. Oh, how sweet. You know, yeah, what's so funny is last night I was actually training in the Philippines. It's so funny. And airlines is um, downsizing and they're doing re-educating. Mm -hmm. And so I was working with them last night. I have another presentation tonight for them. So wow. kind of interesting. Philippines is growing and evolving. Such a mm. sweet people. Oh my goodness. What a gorgeous culture. Oh yeah, absolutely. My son-in-law was from the, his family's from the Philippines. And you know, one of the things that's so great about what we do here, ladies and gentlemen, is that we're, we're associated with some great people and we all share our blessings with each other. And when you do that, that's when abundance comes. You don't have to live in like, oh, am I going to be able to pay my bills this month? Or, you know, am I going to be able to buy groceries and pay the rent too? And, you know, because when you come from need, my goodness gracious, you enslave yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you focus on helping others and, and caring for others and that sort of thing, then all the boundaries just get torn down. And we've seen that time and time again. And that's the reason why when we try to put that show together, you know, 18 months ago, whatever it was, uh, it couldn't happen because we were being reserved on hold. Just just hang on, hang on. There's a bigger picture for you. <laughs> you know, as a senior in the sky trying to communicate with me, would you would you behave yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Not your agenda, and, my agenda. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it, it was a good idea and it still is, but we were being reserved for another special calling and I'm so honored and thankful to be here and to work with you on that show there, Tamara, my goodness gracious. It's just, I'm truly blessed, you know, your friendship and the people we come in contact with the people we help. Oh goodness. I mean, it's just the best of both worlds. It really is. Yeah. It's very, it's very unique space. And, and uh, you know, I just, I'm excited every time we do the show because there's always something mm. new I learn. There's some amazing takeaway. Yeah. So it's, it's a gift, not just to, you know, get to share, but to actually learn from all the people that are showing up. Oh so. my goodness gracious. Yes. Cause I tell people, you know, I do six live shows a week and um, I'm the producer and host of them. 
uh, right. which means you're the book, you know, you, you're the cook, you're chief and bottle washer and all those things. Right. And there's always these little things that you forget and you wake up three o'clock in the morning. And go, oh, <laughs> man, I didn't do that. Oh, goodness, I got to get out of bed. <laughs> I just, that just means I start drinking coffee one hour earlier than I do it for. <laughs> but um, when we get on the show, that's when that's the icing on the cake for me. It really is. We have the people on and hear their stories. And like, you know, like Dr. Ted here, my goodness gracious, the information he shared, because I know he put a lot of people to, you know, ease their comfort a little bit about being because some people are, you know, they 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 put off going to the dentist to the last thing until the pain exceeds. You know, they yeah. they got to do something, you know. And yeah. it's really it's really amazing when people like that share their stories. And, you know, folks um, here at uh, here at our studio, I got to get my paperwork here out of the way. Um, if you know someone would like to be a guest on our show, uh, either on Everyday People or this show here, uh, just email us at inspiration at E360TV. We'll send you some information there. And you can e email Tamara there, too. Just, you know, put attention, Tamara. She'll get it. And uh, we'll be glad to, you know, respond and correspond with you and share any information we can and answer any of your questions because, uh, we're all about giving and we help each other. And in fact, today, I got to thank you from two people that was been on the show and they're uh, going to be on, on other shows because they got seen on this show, which is really great. And uh, yeah, and I introduced them to each other and they, they were really excited about that. And that's what we do. And that's that's the kind of people that you want to be associated with, because um, as I've said before, you know, there's there's people out there and unfortunately sometimes their their focus is only who can butter their bread. <laughs> you know, they only listen buttering their own bread. And uh, unfortunately they enslave themselves and cheat them out themselves out of the true riches of life. Mm -hmm. And um, us being on this show here, my goodness. Tamara, I tell you, I gotta ask you something. Um yes. you said you are originally from Illinois, you've been out in Arizona for 20 years. 22 years, 22 years. My goodness gracious. Yeah. And uh, being living in Arizona there and you go out and you, you hike and trails and all that. Yep, I do. Oh, mm -hmm. I love Camelback. It's my home away from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are some of the other things that you do that maybe people out there would like to know or someone doesn't know? Would you share that with us, please? You no, know, it's kind of funny. I live in the desert, but I love paddle boarding and I go almost every day. There's a lift right by me where I get to go and paddleboard. And then even in the wintertime, I go off and just wear my little wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Look like I'm going deep sea diving, but it's a little chilly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I understand. So, yeah, that. I, love, I love this the beauty and the I, the lakes are so unique versus back home is all in the woods, which I love. Love, love, mm -hmm. love. But this is a different kind of beauty. It's more canyon-like. So you're surrounded mm -hmm. by mountains as you're in the lake. So it's just such a different experience. It's a gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. I remember when I lived in Arizona for 20 years, the, the one thing that was a shift for me was the change of seasons because it didn't happen. Mm -mm. And I remember the first couple of Christmas times that I was out there, I'm going like, you know, it's, it, it, it should be cold, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure about bikinis in the, in this, in this winter time. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Well, I, I never wear bikinis, even in the summertime. Yeah, but, you know, it's amazing how, you know, it grows on you. Arizona flat, it just flat grows on you. It really does. And you, those wide open spaces. And oh, my goodness, when I go up to Colorado Springs there to see Don and I, I leave Amarillo, Texas, driving through the country, it starts changing like that. And I'm going like, yes, this is yeah. wide open spaces. And I love it. I really do. Yeah. And. You know, you being out there in Arizona, you enjoying the sun, the fresh air, the sunshine, the, the lakes and all that. And if someone wanted to come to Phoenix, Arizona, consider moving there. What would be one of the things that you would say that would be, hey, this is what you really are going to enjoy about Arizona? Would you share that with us? I love um, one of my favorite places I take all of my visitors is Tont it's Tonto Natural Bridge. And it's mm. it's a carved out natural it's kind of like a mountain that's been carved through with water going through it. So it rains all the time when you walk through it, the bridge. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's travertine. So it, it has leaky holes and the, the water drips through from the top. It's just wow. an experience. 
So it's a real quick hike. It is a little bit more treacherous. You know, it's not a simple mm -hmm. hike. I think they actually have stairs going down one side. So if you just want to walk and check it out, you can actually go downstairs to it. But there is a beautiful hike to get to it. So it's one of my favorite little hideaways. There's so many beautiful mm -hmm. places out here. You know, there's, mm -hmm. a, you know, just amazing antelope. Is Antelope Canyon, I think that's between the two states. I think it's between, I'm not even sure exactly mm -hmm. where that is, but I know that there's some beautiful views in there. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I tell people, the thing that's most unique to me about Arizona, there is no, and I've, I've been all over Arizona. I've flown over in helicopters and I've served in that yard out there. There's no place in Arizona that you can stand and not see mountains. That's true. Yeah. Very true. true. Yeah. yeah. Very that's true. And I lived in elevations there in Bisbee. It's about 5,200 feet. And up there around when I moved up the, the Benson area there at J6, it's about 4,500 feet. And that is just beautiful elevations because the weather's nice. And, you know, it's just, uh, it, I just really loved it. I really do. And you might see the Mule Mountains back here behind me. Uh, that's that's a snapshot from Bisbee. But uh, it just amazes me how far you can see out there. And there's no place that, you know, you don't, there's no flatlands out there that's just, you know, like you see, on, like like on Hollywood, they see a desert that goes out, you know, for <laughs> yeah, millions of miles, you know, and nothing in sight. And uh, that's only in ho the land of Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's actually what I love about personally, what I love about Arizona is no matter which direction you go, you have a different climate. You can go mm. up north and you can see snow. You go down yeah. south, you see more desert. You go more yeah. you, either direction, you see the ocean, you know, so it's, it's really pretty amazing, you know, uh, not... <laughs> Not towards Texas, but you know, what I mean, you see different yeah. climates and different experiences. So it's just amazing um, adversity everywhere. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a really beautiful place. Yeah, it's uh, really a shame that um, people cannot travel like they used to. But we're, we're getting back into that some because even the airlines now are flying more. And my son was on a flight. He's in the military, and he says, "Hey, the, the plane was packed." Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, people are starting to get out there because. Yeah, I look forward to coming out to Arizona. In fact, we're going to have um, Marty Haggard. He's going to be coming out to Casa Grande. We don't know when, but he's promised oh. to be. Yeah. And he's the oldest son of Merle Haggard, the, the country and western star. He's going to come out there. He's got a lot of fans out there in Phoenix. And so when he comes out there, we're going to put on a we have a little dinner and have a good time, get together with all the folks out there. It's just going to be a wonderful time. That'd be so fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Tamara, we're about out of time, but I'm going to give you just a moment just to Share with any share anything you'd like with the folks out there and just yeah. whatever, whatever's on your mind. Absolutely. Well, I just want to say if you're struggling with conflict, depression, or anxiety, and you're feeling like you need support, um, reach out. I'd love to see if I can give you some tips to navigate it a little bit differently. Um, the other thing is if you ever would like to get a chance to speak and do an interview with Jim and myself, please reach out because Mm -hmm. There's so many amazing people that need your support and need your information. So don't be shy. Share away. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time for this broadcast. We thank you so much for joining. And Tamara, thank you for being here to get, you know, just to introduce you a little bit to the people out there, because we're normally doing the interviewing and get a chance <laughs> to meet you and talk with you some. So you're going to be on with, with us uh, everyday people on Friday same time, same place. Join our Facebook pages, the Messages of Inspiration and Hope, and the Six Minute Webinar, and the Everyday People, because we, we broadcast their lives. So thank you so much, and we'll, we hope you have a nice day, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.